Hello class. In this video I wanted to answer the first couple of problems from your uh, homework uh, assignment number four, uh, module four. Uh, so the first question says uh, the null and alternative hypothesis are given. Uh, determine whether the hypothesis is left-tailed, right-tailed, or two-tailed. What parameter is being tested? Okay, so it looks like we have a standard deviation. We're testing a standard deviation. Um, so we're saying it's either equal to three or not equal to three. Whenever you have the not equal to sign or symbol, it's a two-tailed test, okay? You might be wondering, when would it be left-tailed, when would it be right-tailed? Well, if I have an inequality sign that's pointing to the left, that would be considered left-tailed. If the inequality sign was pointing to the right, it'd be a right-tailed test. And then if there's a not equal sign, we call it a two-tailed test. I do my final check, and we say good work. All right. Uh, it says what parameter is being tested. This one is the standard deviation symbol. So we'll say standard deviation. If we were testing a uh, proportion, there would be a P here, a little P. And for population mean, there would be a little mu sign, right? It looks like a U. Final check. Done. Question two. Okay, so now they want us to actually come up with a hypothesis test. So uh, students who enrolled... It looks like we're testing a proportion. So right away, I know this is going to be a P, right? If I said standard deviation, then this would be the sigma symbol. If we said uh, the mean, this would be the, the mu symbol. But since we're doing a proportion, we use P. And the hypothesis is always going to be equals to. And what do we have? The proportion is 0.397. So I'll put in 0.397. And we want to test to see if the students have a higher completion rate. So the alternative hypothesis would be the proportion is greater than 0.397. Notice how my inequality sign is pointing to the right. So that's a right tail test. If I had the inequality pointing to the left, this would be a left tail test. And of course, this would be a two tail test. But we want to test to see if the proportion is greater, right? It says, uh, yeah, higher completion rate. So that's my hypothesis. Let's check our answer. Good job. Uh, and now they want us to interpret this, right? What's a type 1 error? Uh, so a type 1 error would be where we reject the hypothesis, even though we really shouldn't, right? We make the mistake of rejecting the hypothesis uh, that the proportion of students who earn a bachelor's degree within six years is 0.397. Uh, so if we reject that, when in fact, this really is the correct proportion, right? The correct proportion is 3.97, right? Accepting this would be saying that we believe the proportion is 3. Point, I'm sorry, 0. 0.397. So a type 1 error would be if we reject this, even though this actually turns out to be true. Press D, check answer. Fantastic. Let's try another one. Oh, oh type 2 error, okay. This one would be where instead of, um, we, we failed to reject this, right? So if it is true that the, the completion rate is greater than 0.397, if we fail to reject this, that means we're accepting that the completion rate is 0.397. So if the president fails to reject this hypothesis, even when we know that it turns out that the proportion is indeed greater than 0.397, right? So when in fact the proportion is 0.397. Actually, it should be greater than 0.397. Sorry about that, right? Because right, the president of the college believes that the proportion of students who enroll in her institution have a higher completion rate, right? So we failed to reject this uh, when indeed the proportion is greater than 0.397, right? Is greater, has a higher completion rate. Check our answer. Next question. Okay, number three. It looks like it's similar to number two. Except notice the change here. Instead of a proportion, now it says mean, right? The previous question uh, looked like we tested a proportion, so we used the P. Now for question number three, it looks like we're testing a mean, so we're going to use the mu symbol, right? It looks like a U. And uh, the mean price was 243000 right? So your, your null hypothesis is always something equal to. Right, so the mean would be equal to 243,732, right? That's the um, null hypothesis. 
The alternative would be that it says existing home prices are higher or greater than. So we're going to use the greater symbol. Right? If we said less than, we would have had the inequality pointing to the left. But greater, we're assuming that the mean is greater than 243,732. Check our answer. And now it says which type of, uh, which is the following type one error? So the type one error is when we reject, when we incorrectly reject the uh, null hypothesis, right? So when we reject the hypothesis that the mean price is 243, when in fact it is the mean cost, right? And if we accept the alternative hypothesis, we're saying that the mean price is greater than 243,000 and change. Okay. And then a type two error, um, that would be where we fail to reject that the mean price is 243,000 and change. All right. So we would fail to reject the hypothesis, right, that the mean price is 243, when in fact the mean cost is greater. I clicked the wrong box again. <clears throat> Right? So when the true price is actually greater than 243, yet we fail to reject the hypothesis that it is 243 and change. Ah, we get the fa fantastic. Next question. So I hope that helps with problems one, two, and three. Thank you for watching.